Hello and welcome to Barry Aftercare, the podcast. I am your host, Dr. Connie Stapleton, and tonight I'm talking about one of my least favorite topics of all time, the scale. Why am I talking about it, you may ask? Because I think it's really, really important topic. It's just not something I am personally comfortable with, the scale. And so it's hard for me to even talk about it. But that doesn't mean it shouldn't be addressed. And if it's a difficult topic for you in your life, whatever it may be, that's a sign to me that it needs to be addressed. So here we are addressing a difficult topic for myself. But I want to tell you something about the scale. The verdict is in about the scale. Is the scale friend or foe? Is it something you should weigh? Should you weigh yourself? And if so, should you do it daily or weekly or not at all? Well, we're gonna talk about that. We're also gonna talk specifically about the pros and cons of weighing daily. We'll talk about the pros and cons of weighing weekly and the pros and cons of not using a scale at all. So when I say the verdict is in, here it is, get ready. Because this, my friends, is a spoiler alert right from the beginning. The verdict is your surgery, your health, and your success as a weight loss patient and a human being is not even about a number on the scale. So there you have it. It isn't even about the dang scale. But here we are talking about that thing that has given so many people fits, emotional highs, emotional lows, a reason to quit a healthy lifestyle, a reason to be mean to their family for a month. (laughs) Oh, the scale, it's so powerful, but the scale is only a piece of equipment. It only has power because we give it power in our minds. So, The important point here is that your success as a post-op is 100% not determined by the scale and specifically not a specific number on the scale. You've heard me talk about that before, but I had to make it clear and do let me make sure I have this clear. Your success really truly has nothing to do with the goal weight. What success has to do with as a post-op patient with bariatric surgery is how well you're following a healthy way of life and how you're choosing to live your healthy life. All right, that being said, the scale may have some value in the creation and maintenance of that healthy life that you are seeking as a post-op. So. Let's get on with talking about whether or not weighing yourself daily, weekly, or not at all is best for you. And I try to inform you with a lot of information from research, as well as my own experience as a professional. And I share a lot of personal issues of my own with you because I think it makes me more real. And it's important to know that those of us here preaching to the choir have our own struggles, oftentimes with these same issues. But let's start with what the research says about weighing yourself and how often you should do it. And I wanna also be clear about this. (laughs) And this is true for a lot of things, not necessarily if the sun rises in the east or the west, but when it comes to things like weighing yourself on a scale, it's not at all clear cut. And you're gonna find research that supports weigh yourself every day. You're going to find research that supports weigh yourself once a week. You're going to find some that says, why bother with the scale? So again, the research is very, very vast in the field of weight loss in general, but specifically where the scale comes into play. Now, a lot of people ask the question, right? They're seeking the answer from maybe their dietitian or the bariatric surgeon or um, other people in their cohort, right? 
how often should I weigh myself? <sighs> That's a loaded question, right? And most often, and here's why it can be a really difficult thing with people who have struggled with weight over the years, because people know the excitement of seeing the lower number on the scale. And if you've had weight loss surgery, you can become really caught up in seeing that number drop very, very quickly, which absolutely is exciting and absolutely should be celebrated. The fear and the danger is that at some point in the journey, that has to slow down. The scale is going to show less frequent and less drastic drops in your weight, and it's supposed to. But what happens is this, for some people, can, can trigger a sort of a PTSD, like Oh, I used to get so discouraged when I would diet in the past and the scale wouldn't move. And then I would just say, why bother and give it all up and blah, blah, blah. There's a fear of that with bariatric surgery because that scale drops so rapidly and it's so exciting. It's so exciting. And then it does what the scale is going to do and what your body is going to do at some point in this process. And that's slow down the weight loss. And at some point, the weight loss will actually stop. And in many cases, there will be a little bit of weight regain rebound, right? <sighs> so that can trigger a lot of emotion for a lot of people. So people know the highs, they know the lows. The danger is if the lows have contributed to your giving up on your healthy lifestyle in the past, it has the potential to do that even with weight loss surgery. So we've got to spend some time talking about the power you give the scale, all right? Because the scale itself is a little box with some machinery in it that I have no idea how it works, but that's what it is. The meaning we ascribe to it comes from what's in our head. But let me tell you about some of this varied research data on the scale in general, and then we'll go into the specifics about how frequently to weigh. So the National Weight Loss or the National Weight Control Registry has tens of thousands of people in it. And their research says that for adults in the sample, frequent self-weighing was one of the behaviors associated with successful weight control defined as weight loss averaging 70 pounds and maintained for 60 or six years. Now, these are people who have not had weight loss surgery. So in their research, they highly support frequent weigh-ins. And I do believe they go on to talk about daily weigh-ins. So frequently weighing yourself according to the National Weight Control Registry, which is a huge huge organization with a tremendously large database. They're in favor of frequent weigh-ins. There's a study presented by the American Heart Association News, and they found that daily weigh-ins also help with accountability. However, Healthline recommends weekly weigh-ins as long as the weigh-ins don't trigger anxiety or disordered eating. So there we have Three large organizations, right? Two of them saying daily weigh-ins, one of them saying weekly weigh-ins. There's been a lot of other research that's done, and it's suggested that at least for some populations, and they focused on younger people not being, this not pertaining to younger people and not pertaining to people with a diagnosed eating disorder. But for adults who do not have a, a diagnosed eating disorder, they say that frequent weighing um, was associated with depression, with some body dissatisfaction, with some binge eating, and some unhealthy behavior. So, um, you know, there are studies that are going to show you both, and we'll talk about the reasons for the support of frequent weigh-ins and not support of frequent weigh-ins. Another article I found said that if you look at the diet books, uh, there's discrepancy there too. So the Beverly Hills diet is insistent. They're like, you've got to weigh yourself every day. Popular book, right? The Beck Diet Solution, which is absolutely one of my favorite books on the topic of weight loss, says 
limit yourself to weighing once a week. And Eating Mindfully, another program, wants you to put the scale away. They say hide it, trash it, give it away, or tape over the numbers. So there you have it. There's such a discrepancy between large organizations, between research, research findings, and between commercial programs. So uh, we'll get to what that all means for you. But the scale can be an important tool in losing weight if, 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 big if here, friends, if it's used the right way. And what does the right way mean? It means your life isn't destroyed by the number you see on the weight. Your day isn't destroyed. You don't snap at people in your family or at work or strangers because you don't like what that number says. It doesn't mean you give up on a healthy lifestyle if you see a number you don't like, right? So some experts will say, and I think this is wise, this is very wise, is that when you plan to use the scale, there are some things you can do to help prevent yourself from spiraling emotionally. First of all, you've got to ask yourself what you're looking for here, right? If you have an expectation of this is going to make my day or are you looking for a piece of information? Because the truth of the matter is the scale is going to give you one piece of information and that piece of information is what your physical body weighs in at today. The scale does not take into consideration whether you're about to start your period or just ended your period. It does not take into consideration how much water your body is holding on to for whatever reason. It does not take into consideration what time of the day it is, but you can take that into consideration. So you want to look for a piece of information and that piece of information can be used to help you in your decision making as you go forward. The scale, if it gives you a, that piece of information and what you do with that piece of information in your head causes you significant distress, then you need to get some support or some education or some therapy around the scale and what it can tell you and how you can use that information wisely. So, if you find yourself hugely um, emotional in relation to what you find on the scale, it's probably not a safe or a wise decision to do this on your own without getting some support or information to help you put it in perspective. That's what happens with the number on the scale. People lose perspective. It has nothing to do with the scale. It has to do with your head. So experts will suggest rather than looking for a specific number, it's a good idea to give yourself a five pound range. And other researchers and other experts in the field say, you know, five pounds is okay, but it's a fact that we all have a weight fluctuation zone is what they call it of about 10 pounds, which is completely normal and not necessarily related to what you're eating or not eating. So again, they're talking about normal fluctuations in a human body, given the time of month, given you know what you've had to eat, what you've not had to eat. And so you can't let this be the only thing you go by. It's a guide. It's a piece of information that can help you make better decisions. And if you keep in mind that there's going to be fluctuation, you know, it can help you feel discouraged, right? I mean, we have water retention, constipation, bodily functions that really aren't going to affect the overall long-term process. So here you go. If you're going to use the scale, make sure you can use it in a way that rationally and logically, we've got to keep emotion out of this as much as possible, gives you one piece of information. It's not to affect your mood, but to give you a piece of information. What you do with that is up to you.
So let's talk about weighing daily. And it's interesting because over time, you know, it's kind of like eat eggs, don't eat eggs. You can have butter, you can't have butter. You know, the research kind of changes. Well, when it comes to the scale, for a long time, it was weekly, weekly, weekly weigh-ins. But a lot of the research is pointing more and more toward daily weigh-ins. So I'll talk about some of the research. And here's some of the pros that I found in looking at a lot of different studies. So research, one article says, new research suggests that weighing every day as part of a healthy overall lifestyle may be the most effective way. And they say this because it can help prevent that slow, steady weight gain that is common in adult life, right? If we don't check our weight at all, then we can, all, you know, by not paying attention to it at all, we can slowly and gradually gain weight without knowing it. So they're saying that if you track it every day, you can keep an eye on where it's going before it gets out of hand. Well, you can probably do that with weekly weigh-ins too, if that seems more appealing to you. Seeing a small loss can be rewarding, but you gotta be careful because the opposite side of that is not seeing any loss or seeing a little bit of gain. And if that sends you into some sort of emotional spiral, that's not a good thing. If, it's, uh, if there's a gain over yesterday's weight, right? If you're rational and logical, you can use this as a reminder of what you might want to focus on in your healthy behavior lifestyle today so that you don't see a continued increase. Another study found that daily weigh-ins led to, and these are this is in quotes, this was their quotation, greater adoption of weight control behaviors. So they're saying if you weigh yourself every day, then people tend to be more likely to reduce the um, size of their snacks or the number of their snacks between meals. They cut back on portion sizes. They exercise a little bit more, maybe take more daily steps. So what this research said is there's a correlation between daily weigh-ins and improving your daily behaviors. Because if you see a weight loss, it's incentive to keep going. If you see a slight weight gain, it could be a kick in the rear to step up your game a little bit in the healthy lifestyle behaviors. I kind of liked that. Then I found an article. There was an assistant professor named Jessica LaRose. She's a PhD. And she headed up a study of the effects of daily weigh-ins. So I'm going to report to you, and I'll have the show notes. We'll have these articles so you can look at these yourself. It was an 18-month study, and there were 178 people in the study. Some of them were more diligent about weighing every day than others. But those who weighed every day lost more weight on average than those who did not. And I did find some studies and it was interesting. I found one about daily weigh-ins versus less frequent or weekly weigh-ins. The weekly weigh-ins had no weight loss in this particular study. And this was not bariatric patients. but um, And the, uh, the daily weigh-ins had a decrease of 1.7%. So for that population, it's not like a huge, tremendous amount of weight loss. But it was weight loss compared to no weight loss. So a lot of studies are showing the benefits of daily weighing. Um, one concern in the past that they said was that daily weighing can often lead to an unhealthy obsession about weight. This can be an issue for the population of people in our group, right? The bariatric surgery population group, because so many have been obsessed about their weight to begin with. You, and so many are obsessed about your weight still and obsessed about that goal weight number and obsessed about seeing that scale move. And this is a danger zone, my friends. This is a huge, huge danger zone because the last thing you want to do in your post-op life is remain obsessed with dieting behavior, with the scale, and with dieting mentality. You've got to learn through therapy, your support groups, reading, educating yourself to get away from that diet mentality. My friend, Dr. Susan Mitchell, who has Bariatric Success podcast, 
Um, she is a registered dietitian, works in bariatric field, and Bariatric Surgery Success podcast is hers. And she talks about the word diet. She said, people who are on diets say, just take off the tea and it's about dying because that diet mindset can kill you slowly in your head because you get so obsessed and so caught up that you're missing life. You're missing the joys of life outside of this diet thing. So when you weigh yourself, keep it about the information in terms of your trends. Am I trending up? Am I trending down? And how do I have to alter my lifestyle behaviors accordingly? So you don't want to become more obsessed with your weight. Uh, researchers in this study also <laughs> found no evidence, and this is good news, they found no evidence of an increase in eating disorders because there's a lot of research that says people who struggle with eating disorders, binge eating disorder, anorexia, bulimia, might wanna stay away from the scale because they get so obsessed. And coming from me who struggled severely with anorexia, the obsession with the number on this scale was absolutely life altering in a negative way. It infiltrated my mind and my being and my behavior toward others and my behavior toward myself. And if that number went up on the scale, the badgering and the negative self-talk was so out of control that staying away from the scale was absolutely critical for me for most of the rest of my life. And we'll talk more about that later. But the good news about this study, which showed positive results from daily weigh-ins, for the adults in the study, it did not affect any disordered eating. And they did not disqualify people from eating disorders in this study, which was good. So that was positive. So the, the author, the, the person who had this up, uh, Dr. LaRose, she talked about the studies and the review articles that demonstrate that daily self-weighing is associated with better long-term management of weight. So that's a positive. They're saying daily weigh-ins tend to have better long-term results. People maintain their weight loss more significantly. And this is consistent, she says, with findings that other forms of self-monitoring, like a food, a food journal, food diary, are associated with better weight loss outcomes. And I've read some articles that a food diary is one of the top ways to maintain your weight loss. Because like seeing a number on a scale and the trend in that number, it keeps you accountable and helps you say, okay, I better keep up with that exercise today. I better make sure that I um, minimize the processed carbs that I take in today. It helps with awareness. It speaks to the influence and importance in awareness of the behaviors and how our behaviors influence weight. So that is a good thing. Stepping on the scale every day provides immediate and concrete information about how these behaviors are affecting your weight. So it can give you some cues. You know, if you see a little trend upward, the cue is, okay, maybe I need to increase my, my level of activity, or maybe I need to decrease the amount of times I'm going out to eat because it's a fact that when you go out to eat, you tend to eat more calories. So you can monitor your behavior according to the trends you're seeing from daily weigh-ins. But the key, the researchers say that the key is to use the information from the scale to make changes in your eating and your activity, not to beat yourself up, not to fall into a negative spiral. But if you use that information in a way that says, I need to step up my game, or I need to continue with these good habits, then that is a really healthy way to use the scale. I have a really good friend who's a huge part of Barry Aftercare, and she posts every day on social media what her weight is, and it's a wonderful tool for her. So if that is what daily weigh-ins do for you, then absolutely do those things. It also helps people 
increase their sense of efficacy, which is something really important. It makes you feel like you have more control and you are more accountable. And that's something that people want to have. They want to have accountability and they know when they weigh themselves, if they alter their behaviors this way or that way, which is in their control, they feel better about that. You know, one of the researchers, one of the articles said, it's not that unlike taking your sugar counts, right? If somebody checks their blood sugar daily because they have diabetes, it's a really healthy way to keep track of what you need to do behaviorally. So I really liked that. If that works for you and if the scale doesn't, you know, make you go a little overly emotional, then use it in this way because it's an amazing tool. So Dr. LaRose says that research has shown that in general, people who are asked to weigh daily as part of a lifestyle program, hear that friends, part of a lifestyle program. That means as a post-op, you're living a healthy lifestyle. You're eating according to the dietitian's recommendations. You're doing the protein first. You're drinking the water. You're staying away from a lot of the processed carbs, et cetera, et cetera, right? The people who use the scale as part of this overall lifestyle program really like it and find the scale to be a very useful tool. And I think that's really great, great information. And if you have the capacity emotionally to use the scale in this way as a piece of information to guide your behavior, I encourage you absolutely to do that. In her study, like I said, it didn't impact eating disorders, which is in her words, very encouraging, and they recommend it. So they generally promote daily self-weighing in the context of healthy lifestyle, and they caution again. She said, we teach people in our programs not to view, view this, the weight as good or bad, and that's where this context thing comes from because the number has no context. It's just a piece of information. You say it's either good or bad, or I'm good, or I'm bad. And none of that is true based on this number on the scale. It's simply information. If you struggle with that, I'm good or I'm bad, then understand that what you're doing is you're applying a judgment to this piece of information that's really inaccurate because there's no judgment to be had. It's just a piece of information that can help you steer your behavior. All right. So a lot of positive information about daily use of the scale. Now, Dr. LaRose and other researchers say, if you're going to weigh yourself daily, it's important to do these things. Weigh first thing in the morning without clothes and after going to the bathroom. Use the same scale every day. Keep the scale on a hard surface. Avoid moving it around or placing it on carpet. So keep those things in mind if you choose to weigh yourself daily. And also consider recording your weight. There's a lot of apps. You can make a spreadsheet, however you use it. And I want to tell you a story about a man that I worked with for years and years and years after his weight loss surgery. And he has remained within 10 pounds of his lowest weight for over eight years. And here's how he did it. He tracked his weight. I don't remember how often he weighed, but he would track his weight. And he had a, <laughs> he was a real numbers guy, but he had a scale or a scale, not a, a scale you weigh on, but he had a chart that showed his weight loss for all eight years. Like and it was an amazing thing. And for the last like six years, he stayed within 10 pounds. And he really attributed it to using his scale as that piece of information to guide his behaviors. And that's a really great testament to how you can use the scale in a super powerful, friendly way. So, a lot of pros for the daily weigh-ins. So let's see if there are any cons about daily weigh-ins. There was a licensed clinical social worker writing for Psychology Today, and what she said was, I would never encourage daily weighing, especially since it can take a few days for your body to catch up if you've changed your habits. 
Well, and then they go into talking about the factors like fluid retention, which is going to alter the number you see on the scale, and constant weighing can diminish the ability to tolerate those natural rhythms of our physical state, right? The changes in our weight. It can set off a negative mental spiral. Again, this is the biggest concern that I personally have for people that I've worked with in the bariatric population because for so many people, the scale has had so much emotional impact on their lives. We've got to separate ourselves from that emotion related to the scale. It's like, you know, we want things to be in balance. We can have too much logic. We can have too much emotion. We want to have those balanced. We want to let the scale be a way to give us a piece of information and judge our behaviors accordingly, not judge ourselves according to the number on the scale. Uh, some people believe that frequent use of the scales end up in inhibiting social activities, their sex life, their connection with other people can lead to a depressed mood, can lead to isolation, can encourage giving up and sabotaging your lifestyle. So these would be the people who get emotionally caught up in the number on the scale. Because if the emotional response that you have to an increased number on the scale leads you to depression or isolation or throwing in the towel on a healthy lifestyle, that is not a good thing. So if you're that person, I would forego the scale until you can get some help to make that more of a level playing field. In other words, until you can get to a place where your emotions aren't so severely triggered that it can set off this negative emotional spiral. And, you know, some of the researchers think that daily weighing has more propensity to do that. So I also read that weighing frequently recommendation. The, this particular art, article said it should come with a warning label. <laughs> so a warning label. So the warning label, I actually agree with this. The warning label should be for people who have struggled with things like anorexia or have struggled with other eating disorders because for anorexics, less is always more. If you get on the scale and it says whatever it says, you're like, mm, three more pounds would make me feel even more powerful and more in control. And so less is more. The less you weigh, the more in control and powerful you feel. That can be a really dangerous, dangerous tool for an anorexic. And again, I struggled with this in college and my weight went down and down and down and down until I was wearing like a children's size, whatever. And I was 19 years old. I weighed significantly less than 100 pounds. And every time that scale went down, it made me happier and happier and happier. That is not a good thing, right? So if you have had or have an eating disorder, stay away from the scale until you get professional help and you can use the scale in a positive way. So somebody who's undergoing treatment for any kind of disordered eating, um, people who do vomiting or abusing laxatives or, you know, it's not highly recommended, nor is daily weighing recommended for children or adolescents. Because first of all, as adults, our brains aren't fully wired to do good sound reasoning logic until we're about 25. So you put a child or an adolescent who's surrounded by so much influence. We are too, but we should have better reasoning skills. Sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. Another negative, frequent weighing requires the ability to react with calm, right? If you lack that ability, stay away from the scale, get the help you need until you can react to the scale with calm. All right. So the use the scale advice, the clear warning might add, use the scale as intended, but if it triggers any kind of emotional distress, don't use it, right? So you want to use it as a healthy, healthy tool. And if it can't be used in that way yet, then you might want to get somebody 
to work with you on making the scale something that you can use in a healthy way. All right, pros and cons of weighing weekly. It used to be touted as the best strategy, but as I said, more research is saying daily weigh-ins seem to be working better, but who knows, maybe 10 years from now, they'll change that tune also. But you wanna look for trends. And so if you're weighing yourself weekly, you can look for trends and trends can be very helpful, right? It may not be a daily trend, but it could be a weekly trend and you can look at a bigger picture. Um, there's less emphasis perhaps on the number and more emphasis on the lifestyle. Personally, I think that is a great strategy because as a weight loss patient, as a bariatric patient, my hope is that you will put your emphasis on the lifestyle. Am I following my eating guidelines? Am I following my water vit and vitamin guidelines? Am I moving my body? Am I living a healthy lifestyle? How is my mindset? How's my relationship with food coming along? How's my relationship with myself and with other people? It's about this lifestyle improvement. And if you're so focused on the scale, you're more focused on the number and too many people already are. All right, some, some people say there's no reason to weigh yourself more than once a week because of those daily fluctuations. This comes from a woman named Rachel Fine, who's a registered dietitian. Um, she says, weighing yourself at the same time on a weekly basis will give you a more accurate picture. You have to decide which is best for you. What I like about the less frequent weighing, like the once a week or once a month, is that it does put the focus on how you are living life day to day. And there's a lot of research, especially in uh, the habit research, um, James Clear, Atomic Habits, talking about focus on your daily life. Focus on the behaviors in your daily life rather than the outcome, and you will get the results. And, you know, find some combination that works for you. But I like the emphasis on what am I doing to live a healthier lifestyle, as opposed to letting the scale be the determination of whether you're succeeding or failing. So registered dietitian Rachel Hartley says that weighing yourself frequently can distract you from body cues. So she recommends this daily or this weekly weighing because it distracts you, you know, too much weighing. You want to learn, how's my body feeling today? Does it feel like it needs more movement? Does it feel like um, I need to... Uh, eat more vegetables, you know, some intuition. So you don't want to become distracted from your bodily symptoms. And the scale also, which we've talked about, can create some mental, some mental obstacles. You can be obsessed. You can beat yourself up. You can use it as a way to give in, a way to sabotage yourself. The scale can become obsessive. And remember, the scale is one piece of information. It doesn't give you your body composition. There's a lot of talk about the BMI and it's, it's pitfalls, right? You may be building muscle and losing fat, but your weight may increase because muscle weighs more than fat, all of those things. So be cautious in determining in your mind what the scale says. And the scale, of course, does not determine your overall health or fitness. All right, so you don't wanna obsess about the scale. Too many people in the bariatric world already do that. So if the scale is another way for you to obsess and not live your life fully, it's probably not a good thing. You don't want to sabotage yourself with the scale. And remember, what you do with the number on the scale in your head can really affect your overall self-esteem. So you got to be cautious. Again, there are no good numbers or bad numbers. You are not a good person or a bad person, depending on what that scale says. But if you fall into, oh my God, I'm a horrible person. I'm a bad person. This is a bad day. You're going to affect your sense of self. You're going to affect the mood and attitude of the people you love because you're not going to be your best self. And so if you fall into that, be cautious with the scale. So 
If you've ever had an eating disorder and the numbers still trigger you, if you have some PTSD issues related to the emotional stress and turmoil that the scale causes you, maybe the scale isn't the right thing for you. Maybe you can enlist a professional or a friend who can help you weigh yourself. You don't have to look at the numbers and they can say, you know, you're on track. Let's talk about your behaviors or, you know, um, what have you been doing lately? You can talk it over with them. It would be nice to come to a point where you can get on the scale and not, you know, lose your emotional S. I still struggle with that. I choose not to use the scale. I had an interesting situation come up yesterday. I haven't known my weight for probably 30 years or more. I opened my chart yesterday and I saw my weight. And in this case, it settled my mind, but it could have gone the other way. I have no idea what I weigh and I don't even know that I trust that. But I do know my body has changed a lot. And whatever this weight is, which is the same as it's been for a long time, it ain't the same body. So we've got to be careful about what we do with that number on the scale. Um, if you have tremendous anxiety related to being weighed, then don't do it. Get some help so that the scale can be um, a positive for you or go by your clothes or go by how you feel. What I do is I engage in the behaviors I know maintain my weight. And so I just live my life with exercise and mostly healthy food. Do what works for you, right? If the weighing yourself frequently leaves you in a diff difficult emotional spot, wait till you're in a better spot, get some help for that. If the scale gives you great information and it says, keep on what you're doing, you're doing a great job, or maybe step it up a little, use it for that. That's a great use of the scale. But if you do use that scale, remember to decide before you get on there is that this scale is going to give me one piece of information. You don't need to get mad at the scale. You don't need to get mad at your kids who are sitting at the breakfast table and ruin their day if you don't like it. Weigh yourself, take the information and say, okay, I'm done with that for the day. I will adjust my behaviors accordingly. If you don't like what the number says, then ask yourself, am I doing something about it? If not, do I have the ability to do something about it? And then it comes down to personal choice and responsibility, right? So take home messages from today are know yourself. That's the verdict of the scale. Know yourself. You need to know that the scale will provide you valuable information if you're emotionally in a place where you can handle that information and put it to good use. If the scale dictates your behavior, your attitude about life, your attitude towards yourself, your behavior towards others, it's not a healthy relationship with the scale. So I would get off that scale until you can develop a healthy relationship with it and develop a healthy relationship with your lifestyle. Because this is all about developing a healthy lifestyle. And that is not an easy thing to get through to people. It is not an easy thing when all you want to do to for years and years and years and years and years is get this weight off. I understand the difficulty. So I'm not judging. I'm just saying know yourself well enough to know what to do with the scale to make it a healthy part of your journey. So know yourself, stay in the day, focus on the process, not the outcome. Read Atomic Habits. It's all about do what you're supposed to do today and the outcome will be what it's supposed to be. I've lived that way since I went through treatment for the body image issues, for the weight, for the addictions. I live my life in a way that says, if I do these things, my, my weight, my health, my everything should be okay. That works for me. It may not work for you. So you do you. And then we all need to work on developing body acceptance. Wherever that scale lands is influenced by genetics, by medications, by illnesses, by all sorts of things, many out of our control. We are control of what we do 
on a day-to-day basis. So let's focus on those behaviors, do what we can do in service of our bodies and in service of a healthy lifestyle. And then let's enjoy the freaking lifestyle already, right? Quit obsessing about the number on the scale. You can use the number on the scale to say, I need to alter my behaviors and then get on with living your life. Your success as a bariatric post-op is determined by the improved health that you are experienced, experiencing the improved quality of your life and what you choose to do with your life. It is yours to enjoy. Please do that, scale or no scale. So you decide. So stick, stick with the process, trust the outcome, and share this information with others. Talk about it with your support groups. Talk about it amongst your friends and decide what you need to do and absolutely get help. If you need to remember the scale is not the determination of how you feel about yourself or your life. All right. Use it as a tool in your best interest. I'll be back next week with some more great information for our bariatric population. So please continue to join me in bariatric care, the podcast. Thank you so much for your time. Bye-bye.